Roger Butcher is one of the greatest real estate salesmen in the country. And Roger Butcher is the only sales trainer in the nation who makes live telephone prospecting calls to for sale by owners in his seminars. Roger started in the real estate business with no training or sales experience. And his first efforts were like those of most new salespeople, frustrating and disappointing. Experienced real estate people assured him that he had no future in the profession. They urged him to give up. But guided by an intuitive grasp of sales technique, he began to discover by trial and error his uniquely effective procedures. Soon, he achieved phenomenal results and went on to become the number one salesman in an organization of over 800 agents. Roger acquired a personal listing inventory of as many as 48 concurrent saleable listings and added to his inventory as many as 23 new listings in one month. Roger Butcher has been there, from knocking on doors to succeeding with the for sale by owners. Roger's techniques work in the field because they were developed in the field. Roger's unique creative ability and in-depth practical experience has led thousands of salespeople to unprecedented success and has distinguished him as one of the nation's leading authorities on real estate selling, listing, and telephone procedures. Today, Roger continues to actively list and sell real estate. Plus, he lectures to realtor state conventions and boards of realtors throughout the U.S. and Canada, annually conducting over 100 advanced training seminars nationwide. Let's join Roger now as he addresses an audience of over 800 salespeople. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. Now that you've heard a little bit about how great Roger Butcher is, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how he started. I was born on a 20-acre dirt farm in the foothills of West Virginia. How many of you have ever been to Jackson's Mill, West Virginia? Could I see your hands? Well, those of you that have not, I assure you, you have something to look forward to. You see, as we referred to it then, we didn't really live in Weston or Jackson's Mill. If you know where Weston is, we lived five miles from there was Jackson's Mill, and then two miles up the holler, as we referred to it there, is where we lived, on a little 20-acre dirt farm. Well, at the age of 17, I had a decision to make, and that decision was to stay on the farm, continue to milk cows. With this decision, I could go into the coal mines like so many of my friends were doing, or I could go into the service. And I chose to go into the service. I spent four years in the United States Air Force, got discharged in Oklahoma City in 1965. And then in 69, 1969, I moved to Sacramento, California, where shortly after that I went into the real estate business. Like many of you, if you'd think with me for just a couple moments, that glorious day that you went down and took your test and got it out of the way and looked around and saw all the wonderful people going into this large business and wondering where they would all go, if the business was really that big that it could absorb all of us. Like most of you at that time, we're st I was starting to look for a real estate broker. So I had about eight brokers picked out that I was going to visit with, had a list, had some what I thought was the proper questions to ask, and started visiting brokers. Well, about my third broker was a large company that I had seen quite a few of their signs, had seen a lot of their advertisement. They were kind of recommended to me. So I went in and visited with the manager of one of the head offices there. He says, great, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Butcher, and we have a test that we give all of our new licensees, people just coming in the real estate business, and this is a fantastic test. It will tell us some really critical and important things. Number one, will you make it in the real estate business? And the next part is that the test is broken down in about six different areas, and in this, it will tell us the specific area that you need the most help in. And I thought, wow, that's fantastic. Get me off to a good start like that. So anyway, I took the test. It took about an hour and a half, something like that. And then he had this plastic sheet with circles on it. He pushed it under there and graded it in just a couple minutes. He came back and he looked at me and he says, Mr. Butcher, not to waste your time or mine, either one, but you haven't got a chance in the world of making it in the real estate business. Now, folks, if there's anything you don't need at that time, <laughs> it's for somebody to start your career that way. Needless to say, I did not go with that broker. <laughs> but I did find a broker that I went with 
down the street a little ways. And my first few months in the business, I heard that you're supposed to get known in the business. At the multiple listing meetings every Tuesday morning, at the meetings we were going to at that time, there was about two to 400 brokers were meeting every Tuesday morning and other salespeople. I would go and try to find out who was who in real estate. I would go around drinking about 15 cups of coffee that morning at the multiple listing meeting, shaking hands, introducing myself, asking questions. How do you do this? What do you say? Where do you go? How do you do it? As I was running back and forth this one particular morning, introduce myself to people, this hand reach out and touch me on the shoulder and says, Roger, come here. He says, I've noticed you since you got into real estate business. And that kind of, my chest kind of got a little big and I thought, wow, somebody's actually starting to finally notice me and we all need that. He didn't even lose a breath. He says, I've been watching you and I've never seen such a waste. <laughs> and again, if there's anything we do not need starting out, it's our ego squash like that. So I said, well, what do you mean? And this was a gentleman who was very respected in the board that I'd met just a couple weeks after I'd gotten into the business. And he says, well, why don't you come over to my office sometime later this afternoon and I'll explain it to you. So I went and visited with him and he says, you've just, you're, you've got all this ability, but you've just got no direction at all that I can see. So he loaned me some books and he showed me his training cabinets and stuff where he kept his cassette tapes and his training manuals and stuff like that. You know how they, most brokers take out the training manuals and the educational books. They reach in, they grab the book, and they go, <laughs> getting the dust off the top of them. And then he loaned me a couple books and a cassette package that was taped about 20 years ago on some basic salesmanship. And that was the beginning of my training program. So I would stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock, listening to these tapes, reading the books, making notes, trying first one thing or another, making little memory cards and starting to finally get on the right track to find out what to be done in the real estate business. And some of the techniques that I developed over the period of about the next five years is what I'm going to be talking to you about in these next two days. One thing I noticed when I first got into the real estate business was that there was a tremendous amount of people getting into the business. And I'm sure that most of you noticed that too, wondering where they would all go. But shortly thereafter, it dawned on me that the average salesman gets his real estate license and grows about that tall, and he thinks that's where he's going to stay, and that's where he does stay. But then what I found is there's all this area up here that nobody's really even touching. And again, this is the area that I want to talk to you about in these next two days. Well, I want this to be kind of a different type of a training program than you've ever been to before, and I think that you'll see within the next two days that those of you that have been to training programs before that I'm not your conventional style of speaker. I want you to be comfortable. Some people come into the program and they kind of have self-conceived ideas that they're going to absorb, well, maybe just a little bit. You know, they think, what can this whippersnapper teach me? Particularly people that's been in the business for a while. I'd like you to absorb these two days with an open mind. If you feel you want to use it after that, fine. If you don't, it's up to you. That's your decision. Okay. What do you say? Let's get down to business. <laughs> okay. One thing I did, I had heard when I first got into the real estate business was that kind of a concept, and I thought it was very good. If 90% of the people coming into the real estate business are not making it, then we need to find out why and do the opposite. Because if 90% of them are failing and we want to succeed, do we want to do the same things that those people are doing? Obviously not. One thing I discovered in some of my training here that we've been doing in the past few years is that you do not have to crawl through the real estate business like a turtle with bad knees. There's a lot of room at the top. And this is some areas we're going to be talking to you about today. Let's talk for just a moment about what you might expect to get out of this session in these next two days. Many of you will double and triple your income most definitely within the next year. I don't know who you are. You all have that chance. It's an equal chance for each of you. Many of you within the next three to four years are going to become financially independent totally because of the concepts and ideas shared with you here within these next two days. Again, I don't know which ones you are right now, but you all have that chance. For years, I've seen sales trainers stand on platforms just like this, speaking to wonderful groups of people saying that if you'll just go out and see enough people, this will yield you X number of appointments. And in X number of appointments, this is going to yield you X number of sales or listings. And you know, I kind of go along with that, but let me ask you a question. How would you like to sell them on that next appointment? Let's say, for an example, this coming Saturday, 
you have an appointment at 10 o'clock in the morning for a listing presentation and you get that one and then maybe at 1130 you have another appointment and you get that one too and then maybe at two o'clock you have another appointment and you get that one too am i getting through to you huh? would you like to do that okay because i have had as many as five listing appointments on one saturday and gotten every one of them i'm kind of proud of that and these are some ideas that we're going to be sharing with you here in these next two days you see the average salesman goes out with about half the attitude that well maybe i'll get this one or maybe i'll go out this week and get a listing folks you do not accidentally list 23 homes in one month build an inventory personal listing inventory that probably supersedes five or six normal offices in the area so these are some concepts that we're going to be sharing with you in these next two days I'm going to give you a listing presentation. We're actually going to role play one right here on the stage so that you can kind of start seeing some of the objectives and uh, get a path to know where we're going to with this. And then guess what you get to do? You get to do a listing presentation. Now, within these next two days, you're going to do three presentations. You're going to do one today, and then you'll do two tomorrow. And I assure you, if you do exactly as I show you in these next two days, you will be able to do from memory if you'll do your part i'll do mine from memory tomorrow afternoon when you leave here you will be able to do i don't care if you're new in the business if you don't have your license yet or not you'll be able to do a complete listing presentation that is overwhelmingly convincing for the seller to list with you i assure you if not i give private lessons tomorrow afternoon <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you a question how many people right now presently use a visual aid presentation book could i see your hand Okay, now hold them up for just a second because I'm going to give you another qualifying question. 100% of the time. Yeah, you see, we always lose a few there. Some surveys that we've seen is um, probably around 5% of the people throughout the country in the real estate business now use a visual aid listing presentation book. And I can see why a lot of them don't use them. Those people that actually effectively use them probably would not exceed more than 1% to 2% of the people in the business. Now, it may not surprise you, though, that the people that do use them are also the top producers and money earners in the real estate industry. You know, the years I've been in the business, I've seen that a lot of people kind of come and go. And I always think it's a little humor sometimes when I see these people coming into the real estate business and they say, well, I'm just coming in to help people. I'm really not interested in making a lot of money. Well, you see, I find that these same people on occasion will also lie about other things. <laughs> How many of you are interested in making more money? How many of you are also interested in serving your client? And as you'll see in these next two days, that earning money is really not our total goal and our total concept of what we're going to. Because I feel definitely that if you're convinced, not just convinced, but going toward reaching that goal of being the person that can provide the very finest service to that client, why should they not list with you? I know there's people that come up with these objections. We've got a friend in the business. We've got this. And there's all types of situations you're going to come up into. But what percentage of those objections are really valid? You know, what they're really telling us nicely when they're saying we've got a friend in the business or we might try it ourselves or whatever it might be. What they're really telling us nicely is, friend, you have not given me enough reason that I should do business with you. And this is what we're going to be talking about again in these next two days is I feel myself that the average salesman is going out there and not giving the client enough reasons why they should place the property with them. Now, as you'll see with my presentation and so forth in these next two days, that my feeling is I want to give that person an enormous amount of reason why he should place his property with me. Not all the reasons, because then if that still doesn't get it for some reason, I want to have some ammunition left over, as you'll see. So these are some things we want to talk with you about today. One thing you should know is within these next two days, I am going to be giving you 100%. Whatever's up here, you decide. But whatever I can give you is going to be 100% totally from me. And you know what I expect? I expect 100% from you folks. Is that fair? How many of you have ever lost a listing? Those of you that have been on a listing appointment before, you lost a listing and then walked away from the house after the seller says, well, we'll think about it, we'll let you know. And then in the car going home or back to the office, you thought to yourself, gee, if I'd only mentioned this, gee, if I had only expanded on this a little bit. Can I see your hands? Those of you, that happens down here too. That's great because that happened to me, I know. And again, this is one of the reasons I could see 
for having the dialogue and the presentation that you can use to at least trigger your memory for your dialogue that you can use at that time. Let's talk about why the visual aid presentation is so effective. Number one, it gives you a game plan. It gives you a point of beginning. You look organized to the seller. It tells a story. You know, if you do not have a copy of the Bible in the black and red print, that would probably be one of your second next best investments is to get a copy with the red print. And what you'll see in there is that the words of our Lord was written in red in that copy. And you'll notice that when he was asked a question, here's one of the greatest salesmen in the world, whenever he was asked a question, he would answer in one of two ways. He would either ask a question or he'd tell a story. You see, and that's what we're doing here, aren't we? We're telling a story, a believable story. Why do people not list with you? Why do people not list with you? Could I see a, maybe somebody have an idea? No Lack of confidence. The word I'm looking for is fear. They do not understand and they fear what might happen or what might not happen. And this is probably one thing that the presentation does most effectively is that it kills sellers' fears. I know I've listed for sale by owners that had become for sale by owners after the listing had expired, maybe even a couple times, and now they've said, the heck with real estate people. I'm going to try to sell it myself. I didn't get anything before. And then I would go over, get an appointment for a presentation, not a listing appointment, but a presentation appointment. Do a presentation about halfway through. The people just throw up their hands and say, why didn't those other people do this? Now I had their confidence, didn't I? And then I showed them the services that I'm going to perform. Now the danger is that you don't perform them. If you say you're going to, you better. And if you don't, I think that the sellers have all the right in the world to cancel the listing. And I really do. This is probably some of the reasons why the presentation book works so well.